So in the previous video, we went through one of the numericals along with the steps. So we'll continue the problem. So this is second, second problem, problem number two. So this is the question. You are given with this particular drawing and you're asked to find the support reactions. You have two supports in A and B. So let us follow all the steps. Let us follow all the steps. So step number one is to identify the type of support and to draw the support reactions. So this is a hinge support or hinge support will offer two reactions, one in y direction, RAY, and other one in x direction, RAX. And this is a roller support which offers only one reaction in y direction, which is RB. Step number one is done. Step number two is to draw the points low the drawing. So extend all the points systematically. You have to draw it right below the question. So draw it systematically. This will be the beam. So this is point A. This is this will be point B. And these are the other intermediate points. This point and this particular point. Let us start marking all the forces. You should make sure that all the forces in this particular drawing should be in the form of a point loads and none of the forces should be inclined. Everything should be resolved. All the forces should be either horizontal or vertical in this particular drawing. Right? So let us start from point A. So this will be R A Y and you have R A X. Yeah. Now from A to this particular point, from A to this particular point, you have UDL. You have UDL. So convert UDL into a point load. So let us convert UDL into a point load. So point load converted back from UDL will act exactly at the center of the span. So it is three meters, so it will be 1.5 meters. And 1.5 meters again. So magnitude will be W into L3, 10 into 3 kilo newtons. Yeah. Now you have an inclined force of 100 kilo newton here, 100 kilo newton acting, which is inclined of 30 degrees. So it acts exactly here, is it not? So here, let me apply the principle of transmissibility and let me push it to the other quadrant. So this will be the new position. Okay. So this will be 100 kilo newton and this angle will be 30. It will be acting exactly at this particular point. Right. So this is the position of the force. Right? This is the actual position of the force. 100 kilo newton. So we don't want any of the forces in the form of inclined or, it, or we don't want any inclined forces. In fact, they have to resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components. So let me show the horizontal component here. Let this be the horizontal component and let this be the vertical component. So the, let the magnitude of horizontal component be 100 cos 30. 100 cos 30. It moves horizontally to the left. So let me indicate it inside the bracket. Let me indicate the minus sign inside the bracket because it moves horizontally to the left. So even this moves horizontally vertically downwards. So let me indicate minus sign inside the bracket because it will be using it only in the case. will be uh, uh, using it till step number in step number three only for the first two conditions for the third condition will not be using it so let me write it in in the inside the bracket this minus sign indicates that the force moves vertically downwards and the magnitude will be 100 sign 30 100 sign 30 so we are interested in these two forces 100 cos 30 and 100 sign 30 not this inclined one so you have to Resolve the inclined force into its horizontal and vertical components exactly at the point of application. This is the point of application. This is the point of application and you have to, you are supposed to resolve the force, the inclined force exactly at the point of application, exactly at the point of application. So from this particular point to this particular point, you don't have anything from this point again, from this point to B, you have uniformly varying load. You have uniformly varying load you have uniformly varying load of rate of, of distribution 50 kilo newton per meter and you have to convert uniformly varying load into its into you have to convert uniformly varying load into point load so this is in a triangular form so this will be the base and this will be the apex apex 
So always the point load what you convert from UVL, UVL will be acting at a distance of one third of this particular span from the base and two third of this particular span from the apex, from the apex. So let me draw it here. Let me draw the point load. So this is the base. So it will be one third of three, one third of three from the base and two third of three from the apex. So its magnitude should be half into 50 into 3, half into 50 into 3. Hope this is clear. This is the point load what you have from the UVL. And coming to B, you have RBY. RBY. So this distance is 1 meter. Second. So this is the point load drawing or drawing or point load diagram what we need. Step number two is also, this is the most crucial and important step what we have. So after this, you have to apply the three conditions of equilibrium. Which are the three conditions of equilibrium? Summation of Fx equal to zero, summation of Fy equal to zero, moment either about A or B should be equal to zero. Let me consider A. Let me consider A. Let me show you the calculation through the question. I'll share the screen and I'll show it to you. Hope you can see a shared screen. So this is the question and this is the drawing. This is the point load drawing what you have drawn. Hope you can see all the loads. This is the point load converted back from UDL. This is the inclined, this is the inclined force and the, the resolved components. Resolved components should be shown exactly here at the point of application. And this is the point load converted back from UVL. Point load converted back from UVL. So let us go through the calculation part applying the conditions of equilibrium applying the conditions of equilibrium so by applying the conditions of equilibrium summation of fx equal to zero so rax minus 100 cos 30 i hope you can see this just correlate the drawing just correlate the drawing rax is this plus minus 100 cos 30 minus 100 cos 30 is equal to zero. So you'll straight away get the value of Rx as 86.86. 86.86. Now let us apply the second condition, summation of Fy equal to zero. Observe all the forces. Reay, Reay, minus 100 sine 30, minus 100 sine 30, minus 30, and minus 75, this one, minus 75, plus Rby is equal to zero, plus Rby is equal to zero. So you cannot simplify this particular equation. So consider it as equation number, equation number one. I apply the third condition, moment about A is equal to zero. Moment about A is equal to zero. So it will be again, it will be, just observe, Rex and Rey will not produce any moment about A. And even this force, 100 cos 30, 100 cos 30 will not produce any moment about A because it falls along the same line where point A lies, point A lies. Now, this check whether this force of magnitude 30 kilo Newton produces clockwise or anti-clockwise moment. The clockwise or anti-clockwise moment. It should be clockwise in this direction. 30 into 1.5. Hope you can see the shared screen. And what about this? Even this produces clockwise moment. The plus 100 sine 30. Consider only the magnitude. 100 sine 30 into 3. This is the perpendicular distance. And this even this produces clockwise moment the plus 75 into 5 this is the perpendicular distance from here to here and this produces anti-clockwise moment again rby produces anti-clockwise moment so minus rby into 7 so you get the value of rby straight away or i have written as rb there rby will be 81.84 kilo newton substituting that in equation 1 will give you the value of ry y ry so by using this by this we complete the second problem as well so this problem is also very simple if you observe, if you observe, all the problems are solved in the similar way, in the similar way. So here you had an inclined force, so that's why I thought of doing this problem. So this step is very important, step number two, step number two where you draw the point load drawing is very, very important because you apply the, <coughs> the conditions of equilibrium depending on this particular point load drawing, what you draw in step number two. So where you are supposed to make sure that you have to convert, you convert all the low types of loading system into point loads, into point loads. Let us go through one more problem. Let us go through one more 
problem. Problem number three in your notes is very simple. Again, problem number three in your notes is quite simple. It's not that difficult. So determine the reactions at A and B for the beam shown in the figure. So you can see the drawing. There is no complication at all. You don't have any uh, uh, complicated loads. It's just UDL, which is spread from this particular point to this particular point. You have a point load already here, and this point load is inclined. Just resolve the inclined point load. It's very clearly given here. Minus sign indicates that this force moves horizontally to the left and vertically downwards. This is the converted point load, and this is the point load which, which was there in the question, RAX, RAY, and RB. Point load diagram is already done. So equation applying the conditions of equilibrium by applying the first condition of equilibrium, second condition of equilibrium, and third condition of equilibrium, you will easily find the value of RB or RA. Let us go through the fourth question. Let us go through question number four. This is the fourth question. This is the diagram of fourth question. Let me draw it. There's a small difference here. When we compare this particular problem with the previous set of problems, there is a, a small minor change. Just observe the drawing properly. You have hinged support at A and you have UDL UVL and a point load. UVL of 20 kN per meter. Point load is of 10 kN magnitude. And the UVL is of 10 kN per meter rate of load distribution. And the difference is with the Roller support at B. So roller support at B is inclined. Support itself is inclined. At an angle of 30 degrees. An angle of 30 degrees. So this is the difference. This is the main difference available. So let us let me draw the question. This is one meter. I'll just help you with the drawing here, help you with the point load drawing available. So this is the question, this is the question, fourth question, question number four this is. Now, let us go through all the steps one by one. Step number one is to identify the type of support and to mark the support reactions. So at this particular point A, you have hinge support. You have hinge support. So hinge support will always exert two reactions. One in y direction, this will be R A Y, and the other one in x direction is R A X. Yes. Now support at B is a roller support. B is a roller support, but the roller support is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. So in all the previous problems, you had roller support in this way, is it not? It was in this way. We were marking the support reaction in this way. And making sure that support reaction was perpendicular to the surface of support. Right. So in this way you are marking. So here the support is inclined in this way. So how will you mark the support reaction? Even here you should mark the support reaction such a way that support reaction should be perpendicular to the surface. Support reaction should be perpendicular to the surface. Hope this is clear. In the same way, in the same way you are supposed to mark it. You're supposed to make sure that support reaction, what you mark, should be perpendicular to the surface of the support. Perpendicular to the surface of the support, as you marked it in the previous case. So here, support is surface is inclined. So normal, not not normal reaction. Support reaction should be marked in this way. So this will be R B Y. Let me mark it as R B Y. So if this is thirty, this will be ninety. Is it not? This will be ninety. So this angle will be. 60 degrees. This angle will be 60 degrees. So when you have this particular force here, just observe everybody. When you have this particular force, let me apply the principle of transmissibility. Let me apply the principle of transmissibility here itself. Let me bring this force to the other quadrant. This is R B Y now. R B Y. And this angle is 60. This angle is 60. 
of this scale. I'm just pushing this force upwards. Now, let us resolve RB, RBY into its horizontal and vertical component. This is the horizontal component, RBY cos 6k. This moves horizontal to the left, so it is minus. Vertical component is RBY sin 6t. It acts exactly at B. It acts exactly at B. So this is the main difference. This is the main difference. Here, RBY will have two components, RBY cos 6t and RBY sin 6t. This is the difference. You have to push the force into the other quadrant into the second quadrant here if i draw the coordinate system you have to push it to the second quadrant and resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components this is the only difference what this particular problem has when you compare it to the previous set of numericals then all other steps will remain same you have to draw the point load drawing by extending all of these points by extending this point as well this is point a and this will be point B. This will be point B. Let us start from point A. So you have R A by R A by, and this will be R A X. R A X. And from this point to this point, you have nothing. From this particular point to this particular point, you have uniformly distributed load which is spread. And the rate of load distribution is 20 kilonewton per meter. 20 kilonewton per meter, and the span is 2 meters. So let us convert this particular force into a point load. Point load converted from a uniformly distributed load will be acting exactly at the center. Two meters in the center, this will be one meter, and this will be one meter. So this distance is already one meter. So magnitude will be 20 into 2, 20 into 2 kilo newton. 20 into 2 kilo. Now at this particular point, you already have a point load which is given as 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers. Now, from this point to this point, you have uniformly varying load. You have uniformly varying load. So, this will be the apex and this will be the base. I hope you are clear. This will be the apex and the base. This point will be the apex and this point will be the base. So, the point load, what you convert from UVL, will be at a distance of one third from the base, one third of three, and two third of three, two third from the apex, and its magnitude will be half into rate of load distribution, 10 into three, half into 10 into three. Now coming to the point B, coming to the point B, the original force R B Y will be somewhat in this way, R B Y. Inclined angle of 60 degrees. Inclined angle of 60 degrees. So you have already resolved it into its horizontal and vertical components. Horizontal component of R B Y is, is minus R B Y cos 60, and the vertical component is R B Y sin. So no need to draw this in fact. This is not required in the in the point load diagram. Let me run this. This is not required. You don't need this. Just to show you, I, I tried drawing it, which is not at all necessary. You just need all the drawings, either all the drawings in the form of point loads as well as in non-inclined form, in the resolved form. So you have the resolved components, RBY cos 60 and RBY. Sin 60. Instead of one force, now we have two forces here because the entire support was inclined. So this is the point load drawing which you have drawn. This drawing is very important. So once you get the point load drawing, you have to apply the conditions of equilibrium. You have to apply the conditions of equilibrium in order to find the support reactions. In order to find the support reactions. Let us go through the steps. So this is the point load drawing. Hope you can see. Apply the conditions. Summation of fx equal to zero. Summation of fy equal to zero. We'll get two equations. Moment about a is equal to zero. We'll get the value of r b y. Substitute the value of r b y in one and two to get the value of r x and r a y. As simple as that. Hope this particular problem is clear. So drawing this this point load diagram is important. This is the most important step available. So we went through around the four to five problems, four to five problems. You can go through problem number five in your notes. Even it is, it will be same. It's same as that of the previous one. If you just observe, even here, you don't have UVL, but you have an inclined force as well as the support is inclined here. So RB, RB will be inclined. It will be drawn in this way, making an angle of 60 degrees. So once it is inclined, you have to resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components. This is UDL. This is the inclined load, which has been 
result into its horizontal and vertical components. So you don't know, no, don't need this particular and this particular force, however, you have resolved it. Apply the conditions of equilibrium. Apply the conditions of equilibrium in this way. Summation of fx equal to zero, fy equal to zero, moment about a is equal to zero, get the value of rb, substitute it in equation one to get the value of rx and rda by. Steps will remain common and same for all the problems. So we went through around five problems today. So in the next video, I'll be covering another two or three types, which, which is almost similar to this. If you know how to solve these problems, then you are done with almost 75% of this particular module. So make sure that you understand everything. Thank you.